time. This is uh, actually uh, uh, it's been it's been more than a year uh, that I haven't made any video, uh, and some people were uh, wondering why. And I just uh, I just took some time <laughs> off to think about something uh, to say, and uh, I just made some I just wrote some scripts here that I wanted to share with you. This is the first video, but I will make some others here, and I will read this text which is also uh, a script that I'm going to deliver to all those who want it uh, through uh, the YouTube. Uh, well, uh, this video is called Active Learning uh, Against BS Passive Learning. Uh, hi again, YouTube viewers. It's really been a few months since the last time I made a video, as I said before. I took the liberty of making another one, and some others will come later, on a delicate subject such as language learning. Uh, I want to say again that there are really no scholars about this subject, but I've been learning languages by, I myself am not a scholar, I mean there are some scholars, but not, <laughs> I'm not a scholar, um, but uh, I've been learning languages by myself since I was 13. As an experienced old self-learner, I came to the conclusion um, that there is no one's best method, but some universal principles uh, one can stick to, and which I think should be shared for the benefit of all those who really want to learn foreign languages the proper way. To start off on the wrong foot can lead to disaster, that is, frustration and giving up the whole thing. It is mandatory compulsory to know how to get started. The first phase, which can last six months to one year, uh, depending on the complexity of the target language and your previous experience, is definitely the most delicate one. Uh, craving for quick proficiency is dangerous because it keeps you from concentrating and focusing on your studies. It is like a runner who still thinks he's got 15 kilometers to go instead of staying focused on the track step by step. Thinking that he's got such a long distance to cover can get him mentally tired since the very beginning. Uh, I'm sure that many of you uh, eager learners have taken a moment off your language studies and had some reverie about yourselves uh, being fluent speakers and communicating flawlessly in the language you're learning. Uh, I did that numerous times. When I was learning German, I thought, how incredible would it be if I spoke this language fluently? Uh, that thought made me doubt about my future success, in that I had often around six, uh, seven months um, after starting this language. I was a bit frustrated because I wasn't fluent yet. How could I be fluent after six months? At that time, I had no real experience of learning languages, and that thought could easily frustrate me. I want to explain to you now why these thoughts don't disturb me anymore, even when I'm learning difficult languages such as Chinese, as I am doing now. Uh, I've come to the conclusion that if you do a quality work, the results will be terrific in the long run. Where by long run, I mean that you have to be positive about the fact that there will come a point where the knowledge that you've been accumulating will explode, will take off, the so-called epiphany point. According to some unofficial literature, this threshold, as I said, is called epiphany point. Um, after that point, you find yourself speaking much, much better than you had done before. It's just like a curve. You just prepare yourself to, to get to a certain point, and then it goes up exponentially. You don't know why, but you're happy about it, of course. I'm sure some of you know what I mean. Um, this epiphany point, as I told you, is going to happen at some point of your linguistic path, uh, and the more quality you put into building a core in your head, the more brilliant this epiphany point will be. What, what is a quality work? Uh, the quality of your work is absolutely essential to learning a language well. Quality work is a steady, efficient, and not the heavy work that you impose to yourself according to your schedule whose aim is that of building a core in your head, as I said before. Knowing how to schedule your work keeps you from being a passive learner. I've described some of what I do in another video, but I want to share with you the reasons why this is being is proving itself so efficient with me. In the first year, I mostly focus on listening to that language, but I almost immediately uh, start writing and speaking it. I don't listen to a huge amount of material. I think it is much more efficient to listen to some material very attentively rather than flooding your brain with hours and hours of stuff. Um, I will explain later at this point. Uh, I start writing that language after a couple of weeks after the very first start, mostly using Microsoft Word. Uh, by retranslating the text into the target language from L1, my native language, to L2, the language that I'm learning, and then confronting what you've done with the text after a week uh, puts your brain in a position of elaborating phrases directly in that language, 
and it is also a very powerful form of autocorrection. Uh, when you don't have a teacher, you if you write something and then you you just you see what the difference is, you autocorrect yourself. You know, it also helps absorbing grammar effortlessly. Somebody says the grammar is not important, and they can learn without a grammar book. Uh, in answer to this, I think uh, that grammar is important. The whole point is not whether grammar is important or not, but how one can absorb it without effort, without these bad, <laughs> nasty, uh, heavy tones of grammar. Um, and how one can absorb it without effort. That is, with a study that doesn't foresee any heavy and horrible grammar books and so forth, which I generally try to avoid as much as I can. So, with this simple retranslating operation, your brain fixes the structure of the language and also provides a script that your brain will use when speaking that language. I have been wondering for a long time why I see, literally see, written subtitles in my head when speaking languages, and I found out that this is mainly due to this, the way I do, uh, of learning, uh, the, this way of learning them, the learning uh, languages. Having a script in your head links sounds to letters and words and it is of a great advantage. After three months, I start elaborating phrases in my head and I start doing the most important thing, I talk. Even if I don't have a native speaker in front of me, I imagine having one in front of me and try to think of what I say, introducing myself, talking about the weather, family, and so on. There are some language uh, um, people who enforce the idea that speaking to yourself is not useful at all because nobody is there to correct your pronunciation and your grammar mistakes. I think, um, that this advice uh, is not, uh, I think this is not a good advice in the sense that speaking to yourself will not better your pronunciation, but gets you fluent in that language. A language is also a matter of automatism. If kids don't speak that language, it is simply because they haven't developed the physical capacity of doing that. But as soon as, you, as they do, you can tell that they crave for words. You know, they, uh, uh, they want to say mommy. After a year, uh, as adults, we are ready to create new sounds immediately. My advice is, Listen to some audio material for a couple of months. Start writing and translating from your language to the target language, and after another month, uh, start having conversations, um, even to your, even with yourself. Of course, this has to be a progressive work. After a year, but it can be much less, you're ready for a quantity work. At this point, your brain is ready to absorb better, a huge amount of input. You're just preparing your brain to, to uh, absorb uh, the input, like movies, books, and newspapers and produce outcomes more efficiently, both oral and written conversations with native speakers. If you wonder why people immersed in some language, people who are immersed in some language get to speak it fast, the answer is very simple, because they're forced to speak that language on a daily basis. Whereas, whereas living in your country makes you lazy because you don't necessarily need to speak it. If you create your own environment where you're immersed in that language, in that target language, even if you still live in your own country, you will learn that language very well anyway. Which leads to the final point of this video, how to create that environment. I've been speaking with some Americans who ask me, Luca, how can you speak English like that if you've never been in, in country, and never been to the United States before? For those who pray, uh, who praise the MP3 as an incredible tool, think better. Skype is the real deal. Audio material, although tape sounds uh, quality was much worse, it's been around, it's been around uh, for over thir 30 years, but Skype has been around for much less. Skype is a real tool for learning languages. And with this wonderful tool, even Australians have no more excuse for getting proficient in languages. A conversation with a native is an invaluable asset once you've reached an intermediate level. There are many other things I'd like to share with you, and I hope I'll make some other videos. Uh, thanks so much for listening to me, and I'll talk to you soon. Ciao.